Evander Kane is here to save the day for the Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making Locked On Hockey Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every day. Don't forget, we are free and available on all platforms as well as YouTube. So go check us out there. Follow and subscribe. We appreciate all the support you guys give us. I'm Steel Roden. I'm a recent graduate from the College of Sports Media in downtown Toronto. Uh, you can check out some of the content that I've made on YouTube, on the YouTube channel NHL Quick Hits, which is a podcast I've done over the last couple of years. And this is Big Flip Livingstone. He's worked at The Score. He's done a lot of free, freelance write, writing for the Dober Hockey uh, website. And he's been a content creator over the last couple of years as well. And had a short stint with the podcast himself. Flip, it's been kind of a crazy week in the NHL. Uh, a couple of big injuries, which we've already discussed. But we have to touch on the Nathan McKinnon injury because a lot more information has come out in the last couple of days. Uh, the All-Star break is coming up, so it's going to be a shortened week for Fantasy League. So a lot to talk about there and, you know, some options for some teams that are playing more than other teams this week. And a big signing from the Edmonton Oilers. Evander mm -hmm. Kane is joining the Oilers and Connor McDavid is getting some help. He's playing. He played his first game this weekend on Saturday. Flip, what did you think about his performance? Did you get to check him out in that game a little bit? You have to remember, Steele, like, the guy has not played. So the fact that he was even in game shape, was signed this week and played, I think is very impressive and a testament to what I think is the new Evander Kane, which could be absolutely massive for the Edmonton Oilers. Um, we talked about it off air, Steele. This is one of these moves by the Edmonton Oilers. It's like their two biggest needs, defense and a real goalie. So they go out and get a stud winger. Let's go, let's roll with it, baby. Who knows? It, it is surprising, you know, honestly, for me, looking at the game, like Edmonton was playing the Montreal Canadiens. So, right. yeah, he gets the first goal of the game. Right. He gets his first point of the season. But, yeah, he is a good player. But against the Montreal Canadiens, it doesn't really impress me that much. But, yeah, like you said, we've mentioned so many times, the Edmonton Oilers, they need a goalie. They need another star defenseman. They go mm -hmm. out and get a Vander Kane. I like the move just because they were able to get him for cheap and it does right. help them offensively. But again, they're still on the market for a top four defenseman and a starting goaltender. So it does create a little bit more difficulty with the cap space. But again, he was pretty cheap. Let's not forget, like, if it weren't for the shortened season last year, mm. he would have had his best career to date. He had 56 points or 49 points in 56 games last mm -hmm. year with the San Jose Sharks. So yeah. For me, the guy's game ready right now. Offensive pedigree is, you know, it's it's not up for debate. We know the issues with Evander Kane lie off the ice. It's clear the book is out. Um, you don't need to be an NHL pundit to know that. Um, but like you said, this is a boomer bust situation for an Edmonton Oilers team that, <clears throat> excuse me, really needs this to pan out. Um, but I, can't, you can't deny. Evander Kane's offensive ability. You mentioned it just now. Over 195 regular season games over the past three seasons in San Jose. The guy put up 78 goals and 74 assists for 152 points. But that's just like the surface of it. He kills penalties. He gets hits. He blocks shots. He, he fights. Like he literally fills almost every box on the fantasy stat sheet. Um, one game, like you said, one game against the Montreal Canadiens. So it's not really much of a measuring stick. Um, but the pedigree is there. And I think really what the biggest impact will be on the Edmonton Oilers is freeing up some of the space for the guys that I talked to you about earlier, like Jesse Pugliarvi and a healthy Ryan Nugent Hopkins. What does, what can they do now that that pressure is off to produce? Because you got a stud like Evander Kane playing on the top line. I don't know what you think about that, Steele. 
Yeah, it definitely relieves some stress for those guys who have been struggling, like Zach Hyman. He started the year mm -hmm. at the on the first line with Connor McDavid, and mm -hmm. now he's bumped all the way down to the third line. So it definitely does relieve some stress for the Edmonton Oilers. But right. what would this move mean for fantasy owners right now? Because I'm looking at yep. the stats across Yahoo and ESPN. Kane, he's owned at 50% on ESPN, which is up 21% in the last four days. Yep. He's owned at 70% across Yahoo Fantasy Leagues which is up 28% across the uh, uh, over the last four days. So what, like, would you take a chance on a Vander Kane who's just kind of breaking into the season halfway through at the all-star break? And obviously like, what would you do in this situation if your team is, you know, producing really, really well? It's a really juicy opportunity that I don't know you can pass up. Sure. You have to drop someone to take him on, right? Like it's not going to be an easy decision. But if you pass on him, he's playing with McDavid. If this was an ad on the San Jose Sharks and he's going to play again with, you know, like the guys he was playing with before where we already know he was solid. Now you're adding him in with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl? I don't know if that can be overlooked, Steele, but you, you, you hit the nail on the head. You can't deny that there's going to be some risk involved with a player like this. Um, but when it comes to fantasy... You know, he played on the top line with McDavid and Kyler Yamamoto on Saturday night. And you just can't help but feel a guy like Yamamoto who's been a little bit inconsistent this year, but we know has all kinds of offensive upside. I look directly to a guy like that to benefit big time. I don't know the percentages on Yamamoto, but I would be looking at a guy like that. If you could, I would be adding him. Yeah, it's it, it, for me, I look at it the, at a way as... If it's not broken, you don't need to fix it. So mm -hmm. if your fantasy team is one of the top in your leagues, you, you don't have any injuries, all of your players are producing right now, mm -hmm. and you don't really need to change much, I would just leave things as it is. But if you're mm -hmm. a fantasy team and you're just on the brink, you know, you're just outside the playoff bracket right now, looking, looking, you're on the outside looking in, mm -hmm. or even a team that's a little bit farther behind and you're looking to catch up really, really quickly, that's when you take a chance on a guy like Vander Kane, because you said it, he's playing with Connor McDavid. And it's the same way as if you play with Sidney Crosby. Like you look at Sidney Crosby and the guys that he's playing with, like he's mm -hmm. made Jake Gensel and Brian right. Russ, the players that they have been this year. Yeah. And Connor McDavid can do the exact same thing. So for mm -hmm. me, if it's not broken, don't fix it. But if you're on the outside looking in and you're trying to make the playoffs, like we've only got eight, eight weeks left in fantasy right. leagues right now. So it's definitely the time to take a chance on a, on a guy like a Vander Kane. If, you're in, if you're struggling right now. I think you make a couple of great points there, Steele. Nice work, pal. Um, but <laughs> it comes down to crunch time, right? Maybe this is a different story if this is November. Let's wait and see. Um, you have the luxury of letting him gel a little bit. Um, but we don't have that luxury with the schedule left when it comes to fantasy playoffs uh, soon come. Um, so I tend to lean on the it might be worth the risk. Um, I said it before, boomer bust. Um, but the fact is, the issue was never with him on the ice. So if he has rectified these off the ice issues, which you have to believe at some level the Edmonton Oilers have done their due justice, I don't know. You got to think that it's it's a good move. But the Edmonton Oilers need this move to work out so badly that that's why I'm almost sure it might not because the track record with this franchise recently speaks for itself. Um, but <laughs> there's one thing for sure, Steele. It will be interesting for this situation to unfold. Yeah, and, and you know, I don't know if you saw, but the interview with Kayla Gray and Evander Kane over the weekend, you know, obviously talking about the situation off the ice with all with his ex-wife and all the I allegations it, against him it was i saw i saw a lot of it uh just a couple of snippets mm -hmm. on on social media platforms but it was actually really 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 interesting to see what he had to say i know we're getting a little bit off topic from That's the actual good. fantasy perspective of things but it definitely does open your eyes a little bit to mm -hmm. what was what is actually happening like obviously he couldn't dive deep into yeah. some of the things that he right. was uh alleged against but yeah, it definitely does, you know, brings it opens your eyes on some of the serious notes of what's going on uh, with the situation with him. But again, I think for fantasy owners, and you hit it on the nail, like 
he is still all of his problems are off the ice right now nothing mm-hmm. to do with him on the ice and yeah. i think you hit it again right on the nose there the, the fact that he was game ready halfway all the way to this point like it, it to me it's, it is outstanding but again it was against the montreal Canadiens, so it is hard to say uh what type of player he is going to do and how well he's gonna you know what how well he will bring to the edmonton oilers franchise for the rest of the year at the end of the day he is the prototypical power forward you draw up a guy you know in your mind of what a hockey player looks like on your top line i think a lot of gms are picking what evander kane looks like um, and you really can't deny the pedigree. He's got the track record. If he cleans up between years, I think <laughs> on the ice is going to be just fine. Yeah, me too. And, and you know, so it, obviously for fantasy owners out there, it's your gamble to choose from. I say don't do it if your team's playing well. Flip says go for it. Take a, take a big shot, a big flip, hammer a big it. chance. Hammer it down, big flip says. Uh, just, you know, before we move on to the next segment, I'm just going to go through this quickly. Nathan McKinnon, he is out until uh, after the All-Star break. Flip and I talked about mm-hmm. that a couple episodes ago. So he is not – he will miss the All-Star game. He is out until the All-Star break comes back uh, a, a week and a half from now. So, again, that's another player put on your IR for the time being. And in the short week uh, we have right now from Monday to Wednesday, definitely uh, fill his spot. And there's a lot of options out there with a lot of teams playing back-to-back games. Mm-hmm. And, you know, hopefully – Nathan McKinnon can eat some built bars and get his health back up to par. So for me, maybe Nathan McKinnon can listen to the podcast, listen to this, listen to these uh, sponsors we got right here. I love built bar, uh, built bar covered at hundred percent in real chocolate flip. I've talked about this so much with you. That is my go-to sweet of the day. Every single day is mm-hmm. chocolate. So the fact that built bar is covered in hundred percent real chocolate is just right up the alley for me. I love to get my protein in. It has 17 grams of protein, 130 calories, and four grams of sugar. So I eat that before I go work out. It gives me mm-hmm. a lot of energy for the day. And the fact that there's just so many different flavors flip, coconut almond, peanut butter brownie, which is my favorite, raspberry cookies and cream, which is a second go-to for me, salted caramel, mint brownie, and a lot of more options. You have to check out their website for those limited time options that they come out with all the time. So check out built.com to see what's new on their website. If you go to built.com and use promo code LOCKS15, guess what, Flip? You'll get 15% off your order. I'll say that one more time just so it's engraved in your brain. Use promo code LOCKS15 for 15% off at built.com. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every day. Don't forget we are free and available on all platforms for podcasts so make sure you subscribe and follow follow us on all platforms as well which also includes youtube we appreciate your support so much so thank you for that of course later on this episode flip and i will be giving you our best bets for tonight's games i think we need to highlight but first i think we need to highlight some players some teams to keep an eye on for this upcoming short week what do you think flip Yeah, I think it's one of those situations that's unique on the fantasy schedule um, because it's one of those sneaky opportunities to maybe get a leg up on some of those GMs that are slacking in the Mac in a little bit and not paying attention. They're they're maybe uh, looking forward to March break or they're, you know, they're just they hit the snooze button. And this is your opportunity to maybe sneak a couple of points in there. Uh, It's talking to steel. If you're in one of those leagues that's categorically done and you need a win or a big goalie stat, I'm going to give you a couple of tips here to keep an eye on your fantasy lineups, because with the all-star game this upcoming weekend in Vegas, um, you have a very short week, Monday to Wednesday. So you have an opportunity here to maybe make a couple of ads on teams that are going to be playing more than once. Because there's a bunch of teams this week that are only playing once. Boston Bruins, Vegas Golden Knights, Anaheim Ducks, and uh, among others. So you want to be staying away from those, obviously. You don't have as much opportunity. But when you look at, like, the Toronto Maple Leafs, who are playing a back-to-back against the New Jersey Devils, um, New Jersey Devils give up the fifth most goals against this season. And the Leafs are clicking right now. So maybe look down the lineup at a guy like Ilya Mikhaev, who has... Seven points in 11 games. And uh, last I checked, playing with Marner and Tavares on the second line. 
So this is where I'm getting at, Steele. A little sneaky move. Yeah, you're not looking at Mikheyev to win you your season. <clears throat> I'm not suggesting you drop a major piece. But if there's a guy who's struggling or you have an extra spot, look at these teams this week who are playing a couple of times in a favorable situation. Like, you really can't go wrong. And how I mentioned with the goalie, if you need, let's say you're, you're short a win or you're short a shutout from tying up your matchup, Look at some favorable matchups with a good team, like the New York Islanders this week. Playing a back-to-back, -back, they're playing the Kraken, and then they're playing the Senators. So I like looking at the backup, Simeon Varlamov, available in a ton of leagues. Slap him on your roster, and maybe, hey, <clears throat> it might not work out. But if this is one of those opportunities where your season is slipping away, you need to come up with some options here to really salvage what you have going on. So this is one of those situations where I like a guy like Mikheyev, slap him in there for a couple of games, hope for the best. Even if you want to look at like a guy like Peter Morazic and you need a goalie, he's got two wins in a row now. Uh, he's be I'm not sure if I would go with a guy like Peter Morazic. He, hey, he's hey, let he, a lot of goals in though. He he's was swimming in the net, in. but a win's a win, baby. Wins a, oh, win. wins a win, but it doesn't get a lot of fantasy points when you're still letting five goals. Depends in. the setup you're in. Depends yeah, the setup. Okay, yes, yes. I'm yes, giving options here, Steele. I didn't say they were all awesome. <laughs> but in all seriousness, you know what it's like. Fantasy seasons are a grind. So this isn't exactly some foolproof, foolproof formula that's going to win you your league. But like I said, if you're slipping out of you know relevance, you need to try something new. So look at this shortened week as an opportunity for the teams that are playing a couple of times, dig into the stats, dig into the splits. And like, you know, I'll get to later in the show, but if a guy has, you know, career good numbers against the teams they're playing against, roll the dice. Why not? Yeah. And, and, and you know, you, you made a good point there about keeping an eye on your lineup. And that's a problem I had this past weekend. Uh -oh. And, you know, you're talking about the Toronto Maple Leafs. I actually picked up, Michael Bunting on Saturday night Ooh. and one minute after the game started, I checked my lineup and he was still on my bench. Shout and out to recorded, Scarborough one time. Yeah. Um, that shout hurts. Out to yeah. That hurts. Recorded, recorded a hat trick, recorded 10.6 mm -hmm. fantasy points. And now I am down uh, five fantasy points heading into sun was heading into Sunday. So for me, it's a big time mistake leaving him on, on my bench. So make sure like Flip said, keep an eye on your lineup. Make sure everyone that is playing for the night is ready to go and in your starting lineup. So for me, big mistake, but you're right. You got to keep an eye on what teams are playing twice in mm -hmm. the three-day span before the All-Star break. Like you said, the Leafs and Devils are playing twice against each other. The Florida Panthers are playing Monday, Tuesday. They play against the Columbus Blue Jackets and the right. New York Rangers. Right. So you can look at a guy like Anton Lundell, who's had a pretty – Decent uh, season so far. He's got 27 points on the season. The Oilers are playing Monday, Wednesday against the Ottawa Senators and Washington Capitals. So again, if Evander Kane's available, might as well take a chance on him before the All-Star break or a guy like Kaylor Yamamoto. So for me, right. yeah, those guys, look at the teams that are playing two games before the All-Star break and uh, can definitely help your chances uh, winning the week in your fantasy in your fantasy matchup. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. It's a little window <laughs> where if some of the GMs in your league are slipping and you make a good ad and, you know, you obviously it's going to involve a, a bunch of luck as well. Um, but, hey, you add a couple of guys and you have a Michael Bunting night and all of a sudden you have a massive night and that gap you had on third place or a paid spot is now realistic. Thank your boys later. Um, but... <laughs> You know, it's just one of those things to keep an eye on. That's all, Steel. You got to be aware when it comes to fantasy. Look what happened. You fell asleep at the wheel for a sec. Boom. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just something for uh, to keep in mind more so. Something to uh, let marinate uh, during this short week. But, you know, make sure you do it before your lineup's set. Yeah, keep an eye on what the matchups are. But, Flip, I think maybe we should now get into what they should, uh, you know, make some bets for tonight's game. What do you think, Flip? Well, first of all, I just want to thank everyone for making Locked On Fantasy your first listen. We are here every day, Monday to Friday, and you can get us on everywhere you get your favorite podcasts and on YouTube for free. We, Like Steele said, we appreciate the love so much. 
Um, heading into my our third and my favorite segment, as always, um, I believe last time we spoke, I was two for three. Um, I, my lock of the night, the over in the Chicago-Colorado game, there was eight total goals, and Colorado covered the puck line. Um, I think we both had the stars, though, and they got slapped around by the, yeah, the Capitals. they but, did. Hey, we're just looking for positive nights, and we're offering you up some situations, right, Steele? Like, we're, we're the experts here, but uh, we're just here to guide you along. Yeah, just a couple uh, – some some options that intrigue Flip and I. And, mm. and we didn't we didn't have an episode Saturday night, but if you do follow us on Twitter and on the, the Twitter handle for Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast – we do send out night. Uh, we do send out picks, our favorite picks, every single night. So please make sure to follow us on Twitter if you're still looking to to, to for some suggestions mm-hmm. on the games uh, that we choose to to bet on. So Saturday night, I was actually three for three with my picks: Sabers money line, uh, Morgan Riley power play assist, which was plus two hundred five, which really hit big home for me, and then as well as uh, the New Jersey Devils puck line as well. So. Three for three on Saturday. I'll go here, Flip, with my first bet of Monday night, and that is the Ducks money line at plus 100. What do you think about that? Well, the Ducks have been banging out for you. So you said before, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, I think this Anaheim Ducks team is really starting to turn some heads. Um, You know, a couple weeks in, a couple of months in, okay, but now we're sitting in almost February. Um, and you know, they're knocking on the door as the top couple of teams in the Pacific. So, um, Trevor Zegris is a must watch talent. Um, so when he's in the lineup, I'm starting to really like the angle for the ducks. Um, and you know, they're rolling right now steel. So I, I don't hate it. I'm staying away from that game, but I do like the pick. Um, I, I just don't. I don't know if you can how how why would you stay away from that game? Like it, the Ducks are at plus one hundred. They're going up mm. against the Detroit Red Wings, and in the last two games, the Detroit Red Wings lost eight to five to the Chicago Blackhawks, and then seven to four against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Well, I'll say this: Detroit's at home, number one, and you and I have talked about this team going in the right direction. Yes, they've been not playing well, and the crooked numbers speak for themselves. But, you know, in against the Leafs, they could have easily won that game. Um, if not for Michael Bunting, actually, they win that game. So <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. I just maybe let me tell you about my other picks and then you would understand. Like, if, okay. if there's a pick to be made there, I'm with you. Ducks are rolling. I like it. Um, I just actually would prefer to take a look at the Vancouver-Chicago game. Um, Chicago has yeah, yeah. been banking me over bets all season long. Um, they, I think they're sitting, let me, let me check the stat here. They are sitting 3.34 goals per game and have allowed the fifth most all season long. Um, five of the last seven visits, Vancouver to Chicago have gone over the number. Um, I just, it's at 5.5 and I see this game easily at a six. Um, I like the Canucks to put up like a three piece McNugget minimum. Um, and yeah. I can see this number like going over just like the last time we bet on this over. And I think there was 13 goals scored in that Chicago game. Um, yes. So I like the over five and a half in the Vancouver Chicago game. Um, that's my first pick of the night. I, I like that too. And I'm going to jump on that with you as well, but mm. I'm also going on the money line for the Vancouver Canucks in that yeah, game. I like it. They're, at pl- they're at plus 100 right now. So I'm taking both the Ducks and Canucks at plus 100 on the money line. I'll take that every single day. That For yeah. me, that's easy money right there, especially, again, same reasons why I'm going with the Ducks. The Chicago Blackhawks are in the same boat with the Detroit Red Wings right now, just have not been playing good, even though Chicago just won 8-5 against the Red Wings. Yeah. To me, they don't have – Marc-Andre Fleury has not been playing that well this year. Their backup, mm-hmm. Lankanen, has not been great. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they're in a terrible situation right now this season. So, for me, I'm taking the Canucks – on the money line uh, as well, because, you know, Thatcher Demko has just been absolutely unreal for them the entire season. So I think they win that game because of Demko. Yeah, Saturday was a real tough game against Calgary, too. Like, that could have literally gone either way. I can't remember the last time I watched a hockey game that went 0-0 all the way to overtime. Um, so It's been a while. Yeah, like, I don't have the stats on that. That's why we need to hire an intern or something for that. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I I like it. Um, and I agree with your Demko comment. I think he's, you know, going to be there one day as one of the elite goalies in the, in the league. Um, one day, 
Um, my <laughs> second pick of the night. Um, it's not my lock of the night, which I will feed you next deal. Um, we, I feel like we've talked a lot about the Edmonton Oilers on this show and the Ottawa Senators, and they're going off uh, tonight um, in Ottawa. Oilers have now won three straight, and I know it's only three games, but they're starting to turn the page. And the ad of a guy like Evander Kane cannot be overlooked just from a pure morale standpoint. We can sit here all week till we're blue in the face and try and break down what this means to the on-ice product and dollars and cents it. But just from like you've played on teams, you added a talented guy like that during crunch time, that gets you fired up. I don't care who you are. That is an angle that you can't ignore on a team that's already now starting to really turn the page. So, you know, check, check, check. And they've won, oh, let me see, six in a row in Ottawa and nine of their last 10 against the Senators overall. No value on the money line, but on the puck line, our favorite, minus 1.5. It's paying plus 139 right now. Um, that's going to change by puck drop for sure. But, like, the Oilers keep rolling. Ottawa's still reeling. You know what I'm saying? Like, this feels yeah. like a lot of great situational things going Edmonton's way. Yeah, a lot of things are going in the right direction for the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, you know, I think because the, the first game with Vander Kane was against the Montreal Canadiens, the next one is against the Ottawa Senators, who have not been great either. Goalies are a situation. Drake Batherson's injured. Right. Uh, you know, they're still it's still a very young team. So I I want to wait until Wednesday's game when they go up against like a better team against the Washington Capitals. But I like your pick right there uh, again. Thank I you. liked your your first and second pick. I will jump on the Canucks in Chicago over five and a half mm -hmm. goals. I do like that a lot, but here's one that I've got. It's the Leafs Devils over six and a half goals at plus 110. I think there, again, is another big money, big money bet for you to put uh, put on as well for Monday night's bets. Mm -hmm. Over six and a half, the Leafs just continue to put the puck behind, uh, puck in the net. Yeah, uh, They're just rolling and rolling over teams right now. So for mm -hmm. me, again, I'm going with the, with the, the, the bets that are have the most potential to make the most amount of money with the with the plus hundreds uh, money line on Ducks and Canucks and then again plus one ten over six and a half goals in that Leafs uh, Leafs Devils game and my lock of the night is Let's gonna have to be the my lock of the night is definitely gonna have to be the Vancouver Canucks money line at plus one ten or yeah. sorry at plus one hundred mm -hmm. I just think again Vancouver's uh, you know tough situation mm -hmm. against the Calgary Flames on Saturday night but they played a really good game and I think going against the Chicago Blackhawks on the road. I, I feel yeah. like they have it. I feel like they do. Well, there's also, you know, that goes back to the, the the cup days with the Canucks and Blackhawks a couple of years back. Like, they, they have a pretty good hate on for each other still. Um, I remember when I was looking at the numbers, too, I'm pretty sure Vancouver's dominated them of late in Chicago. I think it's something like seven or eight. So you have that going for you, too, which, like, you know me and trends. Um, but for my lock of the night steal, I'm switching it up a little bit here. And I think I want to be doing this a little bit more because it's something that I'm really liking as a, as a better, um, betting a lot of player points and player props. Um, it's sometimes hard for us because we record a little bit ahead of games. Um, the odds aren't always out. So, you know, we're trying to give you guys as much information and background as possible so you can make the right bet. Um, so we haven't talked a ton about it, but I'm throwing out a player prop bet. It's my lock pick of Monday night Austin Matthews hasn't scored in four games he does not do that very often um the elite one of the most elite snipers in the game we're not here to debate that four game goal drought he's still producing still playing well just not really getting his chances but New Jersey allows a ton of goals they do not kill penalties the Leafs are rolling on the power play they're first in the NHL at 31 percent also, in eight career games against the Devils, sorry, nine, he has eight goals, six assists, and three game winners. So I like the track record. I like the situation. I think Matthews comes out and has a big game. And I can't tell you the odd on it right now. It's probably nothing special. But I really like this spot for Matthews to bust out of his streak in a big way against a team he's already known to play well against. 
What do you think? I like I like that player prop flip. Boom. I think that's definitely something we need to do a lot more. Agreed. You know, def- a different variety of options for everyone out there listening to the to the hockey podcast right now. So I like your option. I like the lock of the night. Austin Matthews doesn't go uh, goalless for four games very very often. It doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Like that lock of the night. My lock of the night again is the Vancouver Canucks money line at plus one at plus one hundred. I'm loving it. I'm loving it, man. And what was that? Episode four in the books? Yes, sir. Yes, it was. Episode four in the books, Steel. You said it before a couple of times. We really appreciate all the love, all the feedback. You know, we say hammer the subscribe, hammer the like, but we really do appreciate it. We are just getting warmed up, people. Steel and I, you're going to be seeing a lot of these mugs. I'm hoping (laughs) they're accompanied with at least some winning picks, just a few. Um, we're going to have another big show for you tomorrow, a big week of shows. We're going to be looking ahead at some NHL award bets, some future bets for you guys. We do not just feed you nightly winners. Um, I think steel has got a couple of specialties for you tomorrow on our Tuesday show for daily fantasy as well. So it's going to be a big show as always for myself, flip Livingstone. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for making us your first listen. You might as well head over to Locked On Bets and make it your second listen for all of your betting needs. They got you covered on the Locked On Fantasy Network. For Steel, I'm Flip. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll see you tomorrow.